Hi everyone, in this quick video we're going to take a look at how to do a piling layout using Civil 3D, Revit and Dynamo. Now the difference with this piling layout is you can see here that we have two surfaces in Civil 3D. So I have my um, proposed ground up here and I also have my strata level for the rock. So what we're aiming to do here is take this piling layout as you, you can see here and we're going to want to work out where the piling hits the um, finished surface at the top here and also where the piles will hit the uh, rock level here. So the first step, if I just um, get a plan view in here, I'm going to switch off the triangulation in this particular view just to make it a bit easier here. So we'll just say uh, border in here. And you can see now that we have this piling layout. Now what I've done is I've imported this from a Revit model. But what's really important is to have these uh, little points in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some civil 3D points based on these AutoCAD points. So you can see here that we have uh, convert AutoCAD points. So we'll make a selection of all of these points in here. And then we're supposed to enter a point description here. I'm just going to uh, press enter here and just accept the default. OK, and all the points are now created. So you can now see that we have our civil 3D points in here. Now, if I select one of these points, like so, all these points are actually cu are currently in a group. And you can see here that we can actually get elevations from a surface. So if I do this, I can decide the surface I'm going to go and get. So you can see how I've named the surfaces. So first I'm going to get the top surface position. OK, and we're going to do all the points. And there we have it. Yeah, you can now see that we've got that uh, top surface shown. OK, what we'll do is we'll make a copy of these points and we'll do the same for the bottom surface. So we'll select all the, all the points like so. Uh, we'll copy them down the Z just a little bit here. It doesn't matter how far we go down here. What we'll do here is we'll just let it uh, resequence and we'll just use the next point number in the sequence. OK, and you can now see that we have the copied points just in here. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So we'll select these points here. And what we'll do is we'll um, get elevations from surface. Uh, this time we want the bottom in here. OK, um, here we just want to take the selection down that we've got. And you can now see that we've got our points at the bottom. OK, so that was a very quick and efficient way of actually locating the top of pile here and the bottom of pile where it hits rock. So the next thing we're going to want to do is export these out. So let's again make a selection of my points up here. And you'll see here that I can export these points. Now, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to export all the points and I'm going to then use Dynamo to sift um, through the top points and the bottom points. So. We can see that we're we're doing this as a PNEZ file. So what this means is we're going to get the point number, the easting, northing, and the Z level, and then we'll uh, push these out over here. So I'm just going to call these ones um, points. Yep. And whoops, let's just points, and we'll save that. So the Civil 3D section is now complete. Let's now switch into Revit. So inside Revit, what I've done is I've identified the coordinate, which is going to be my datum for the point laying out. Now, what this is, if I go back into Civil 3D, you'll see that I've marked the coordinate with uh, a circle here. And I've just gone into the properties palette and I've used the X, Y and Z location. And I've then plotted that in here. Obviously, I've uh, increased the coordinate um, by 1000 because my Revit model is going to be in millimeters. Now, first thing I want to do is I want to be able to get these surfaces across. And what I've done in Civil 3D is I've exported the entire model out here as a Civil 3D drawing. Now, what this is going to do is this is going to just simply export this to AutoCAD. Yep, and I've already done that. So what I'm going to do is now import that inside here. So we'll go to Insert. Uh, we'll go ahead and link CAD. Okay, the one I've done is this one here. It's just the model. And here we'll just do center to center. Make sure that the uh, scale is custom factor 1000 because, again, in Civil 3D, we're working in meters. In Revit, we're working in millimeters. So let's go ahead and open that. And you can now see the model. So if we open this in 3D, 
Okay, so we'll just um, show the uh, imported category in here. And you can now see that we've got that top surface shown. And I've also got my green circle here. Now, first thing I want to do is make sure that it's in the correct location. And you can see here it's not at the minute. So we'll go ahead and move it. So I'm just going to snap to the uh, center of the circle here. And we'll snap that to the point. So that's now in the right location. Next thing we need to do is uh, create a Revit surface from this. Now, there's a number of ways we could do this in Revit 2019. I could link topography um, if I'm using BIM 360. Uh, I'm not using that in this workflow. So here I've just uh, taken the uh, method of importing this from Civil 3D. So what we'll do is we'll go to Massing Insight, click on Topo Surface, and we'll um, select this import instance here. And we're going to use the same triangulation layer that we've used in Civil 3D. So we'll get the triangulation identical. OK, so there it is. There's the triangulation done. Uh, based on this, we'll now go ahead and uh, switch off our imported categories up in here. And we'll now change this to grass so we can actually see this a bit easier. Here we are. OK, so now we're going to go ahead and launch Dynamo and we'll do our Dynamo part now. OK, so here we are inside Dynamo. So first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, select the correct text file. Now, I've just saved this to my desktop um, just for speed here. So let's go ahead and find that. And that one's going to be points. I think we just called it there. So we'll open that up. OK, and you can see that's executed very fast. So you, you can now see that Dynamo has created all of the pining locations. And if we go into the model here, you can see that we've got some piles laid out uh, or the Dynamo preview of those piles. Uh, what we need to do here is make sure that we choose, uh, choose the right uh, pining type. So let's just have a 600 diameter in there and we'll target level one. OK, and the job's now done. So you can now see that Dynamo has modeled all of those piles in there. And you can see the toe of the pile is targeting the rock level. And the top of the pile is following our proposed ground surface. So how does that work? Well, let's go back into Dynamo and take a look at the graph in a, a bit more detail. So I'm just going to get rid of the background there so it doesn't confuse us. So first thing that's happening here is you can see that I'm just simply reading the text file across here. I'm then using string split to actually split it out into separate lists over here. So you can now see I've got lists of each uh, row of data through there. Uh, what we're then doing is transposing it. And of course, once we've transposed it, we can use the get item index to get each section of that data. So here I've got my X coordinates, my Y and my Z levels. Now, of course, these are strings because they've been read from a text file. So this is converting them into a number. Then I'm using this simple code block here to multiply each coordinate by 1000 and then deduct the project base point. Uh, this uh, piece of code in design script here tells the list to lace because otherwise we'll just get one result in here because the project base point is just a single item. Now, while we're thinking about the project base point, if we just come up to this uh, section over here, you can see that this node here is getting the current project base point. Then I'm, then I'm extracting the east and west, north and south uh, of those. And that's actually getting the current uh, project base point. And we're then deducting that with this code block. So what we're ending up with here are coordinates in uh, Revit fashion rather than Civil 3D. So then we're placing down some points in here. What this is then doing is this is sorting by the X coordinate because obviously we've got um, the X and Y coordinates are exactly the same on at least two of the points and the Z coordinates the only thing that's changing. So I'm sorting them by the uh, point X. And now you can see that we've got a list of sorted points in here. Uh, because they're sorted in here, then what I'm actually doing is I'm, if I just show you the list so you can see what's going on here. Uh, if we have a look at these Z levels here, you can see uh, that we have the um, top Z level and the bottom Z level in there. And I've got the same as I go down through the list here. So this is getting every second item. Um, this is getting every second item with a shift of one. And then we're able to uh, create our line that's going between that. I'm getting the curve length from it. And then finally here, this node is placing down the families. OK, so very useful little Dynamo script there. And yes, I could have done it with the intersection method of intersecting um, points with the topo surface, but it's quite costly in computational time and it doesn't, isn't always that successful. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. Hopefully it's useful. Thank you very much.